the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x is reflected across the x-axis and then compressed vertically by a factor of 8 thirds. What is the equation of the new graph? All right, so let's think about this step by step. So if I start, and I'm just going to draw some quick hand-drawn sketches here. So that's my x-axis. That is my y-axis. And if we're talking about the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x, that looks like this. In the first quadrant, it looks like y equals x. And in the second quadrant, it looks like y equals negative x. Because the absolute value of a negative number is its opposite. So let me make it look a little bit more symmetric than that. So it looks something, something like that. That's what the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x looks like. Now they're asking us to do what amounts to two different transformations. The first one is they want to reflect it. They want to reflect across the x-axis. So they want us to flip it across the x-axis like this. So instead, it looks like this. So that graph, that equation that describes this graph, well, this is going to be the opposite. Whatever y you were getting on this orange graph, you're going to get the negative of that. So you're going to get y is equal to the negative of the absolute value of x. And if this doesn't make intuitive sense to you, try it out. In the orange graph, when x is equal to, let's say, 2, well, the absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. But now we want to take the absolute value, but then take the negative of it. This thing stays non-positive the entire time. So the absolute value of 2 is 2, but we want the opposite of that. We want negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2, but we want the opposite of that. But they didn't ask us to just reflect across the x-axis. They then want us to compress vertically by a factor of 8 thirds. So let's think about this a little bit. Compress vertically by a factor of 8 thirds. So if they said stretch vertically by a factor of 8 thirds, then I would just multiply this by 8 thirds. And sometimes it's helpful to think of this in terms of a mixed number. 8 thirds is the same thing as 2 and 2 thirds. So if you were to stretch by 2 and 2 thirds, you would get taller. You would look something, you would, it would get something like this. But if you are compressing, then it's going to look something like this. If you're compressing vertically, you can think about it as being stretched horizontally. So if you're compressing by a factor, you should multiply by the reciprocal of that factor. Think about it. If you were compressing by 3, you would multiply by 1 third. So if you were compressing vertically by 8 thirds, well, that means whatever y you would have gotten, you multiply that times the reciprocal of 8 thirds. Or you could, another way you could think about it, you could divide that by 8 thirds. So if we want to get if we want to get this thing right over here this is going to be y is equal to the negative absolute value of x and since we're compressing by 8 thirds we would divide that by 8 thirds or another way to think about it dividing by 8 thirds is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal so negative 3 eighths times the absolute value of x and when we look at our choices we see that it is that choice right over there. And I really want to stress this point because I think it can get a little bit confusing. The reason why I multiplied that by the reciprocal is we're saying compressing vertically. If we said stretching vertically, we would just multiply by 8 thirds. But since we're compressing, we would divide by 8 thirds or multiply by its reciprocal.